Hello, everybody, and uh, welcome to our latest Master Your Marketing webinar series. Uh, my name is Kate. I'm the Content Marketing Manager here at Main Street ROI, and we're really excited today to have um, Sean from Active Demand here to present with our latest, our latest uh, Master Your Marketing webinar series talking about increasing your conversion rates with account-based marketing. Um, a couple things before we get started. So as always, uh, the webinar will end around one o'clock. We'll present somewhere between 40, 45 minutes of content, and then we'll leave time for a Q&A at the end of the session. Um, if you have any questions along the way and you wanna make sure to remember them, you can feel free to type them right into the question and answer box. We'll keep an eye out and make sure to get back to as many questions as we can. Uh, after the end of the webinar, we'll be sending out a replay email that will have a video replay of the actual presentation, as well as a link to a PDF of the slides. So you'll be able to have access to anything um, that you've missed along the way. And uh, with that, let's get to know a little bit more about Sean here. Sean, I'll let you take over and let you introduce yourself. Okay, fantastic. Thank you all uh, uh, for taking the time to meet with us today. And I'm uh, very excited to be part of this, uh, this webinar series. Um, a little bit about me is I've been marketing for many years in different, uh, different uh, companies that I've either started or held executive positions on. And currently the company that, uh, that uh, I have is a company called Active Demand. So I'm the CEO uh, and co-founder of Active Demand. And I'll talk a little bit about Active Demand at the end of the presentation, but uh, the, the intent of this presentation is not to be a marketing presentation for the product and hopefully it's a case that uh, th with today's presentation, you get some good tips and good ideas uh, as far as uh, uh, how to drive conversion rates, specifically with account-based uh, uh, marketing strategies. And at the end of the, the, the presentation as well, uh, we've got a free giveaway. We've got a, uh, a free social media scheduling software package that is available to everybody who's on this webinar, and I'll give you a link to that pre uh, that. Uh, uh, that uh, scheduling tool uh, at the end of the presentation. So uh, today's uh, presentation has a focus on uh, really using account-based marketing as a uh, conversion optimization strategy. And uh, I'll talk a lot about uh, uh, data. I think data is the, is the big key element uh, and advantage we have when we're using uh, account-based marketing. And I'm gonna talk a little bit about uh, some of the challenges we face uh, as digital marketers and uh, getting gaining an edge with the right data. And I'll talk about some of the struggles that uh, we all may face uh, doing account-based marketing. And uh, I will as well uh, give you a, a very concrete example of how, for example, we as a company are doing uh, account-based account, account -based marketing. So uh, for starters, I just want to talk about uh, what really what is account-based marketing and why uh, what is the advantage of account-based marketing. And account-based marketing, the idea being is that there's a set of key companies, uh, accounts, that we believe are aligned with uh, our product and service offering. And if we know what these companies are, then it's a case that we will drive marketing initiatives to try to get these companies to move through our funnel and uh, hopefully make a, a buying decision or another buying purchase decision that involves our products and services. So really the, the advantage of uh, account-based marketing is that ahead of time we know the companies right we know the companies that we're targeting it's uh we we control uh for the most part the dialogue right where we're involved in the dialogue because it's a strategy where we know the other participant in the in the stra in the, in the conversation and I, I i argue that if the accounts that we're targeting it's a case that we have very good alignment with our sales staff as well as our marketing staff Right, because you know the salespeople, they know what the accounts are, and the marketing staff, they know what the par um, accounts are, and we're working together to try to convert these companies into being um, clients. And uh, really, another advantage of account-based marketing is that there's a lot of data available from multiple sources, and uh, it's a case that we can go into it with a sound strategy and a lot of ammunition to help not just ourselves, but help the, the, the targeted accounts to make these purchasing decisions. Now, traditional marketing 
the reality is is we're not in the driver's seat we may think we are but we the reality is is we get we what we what we get there's no way to control the exact people that will come to our website and consume our digital assets and quite often as marketers are in the situation where oh look it's a great looking lead look it, there's it's fantastic sales come on why aren't you taking this um, and the reality is we do uncover uh, uh, hidden diamonds too. It's a case that, oh, look at this company. We never even knew that they had a need that uh, we are so well aligned for. So there is some uh, a bit of up and down there on the, on the traditional approaches. So definitely on the account-based marketing side of things, sales and marketing are uh, aligned and the initiatives are definitely strategic. Whereas with the tra traditional approaches, you know, it's... It, it's going to be somewhat reactive. We can put all these great plans and infrastructure in place, uh, but the reality is we don't, you know, we're making a meal. We don't know who's actually going to show up to eat it is, is the reality. So it's going to be somewhat, uh, somewhat reactive. So the challenges we face with it, so it isn't all just uh, uh, peaches and cream. It, everybody isn't just focused only on account-based marketing for various reasons and it's a case that i think it's because we face challenges uh with account-based marketing and i think this this first challenge i'm going to talk about is it's regardless of what type of marketing strategy that we undertake just like ourselves our clients we put ourselves in the clients uh, our prospect rather prospect shoes we're all busy they're busy right and let's face it, uh, with the availability of information and data, there's a lot of um, task switching and uh, our attention spans are getting lower and lower. And uh, we're seeing this on our websites with decreases in dwell time on our pages, uh, the page depths getting lower. And uh, it's a case that uh, we want people to engage with the content, but they're not really taking and consuming all of of it um, and uh, the reality is is the conversion rates are not where we want them to be and hence we're taking in webinars like this to come up with strategies to hopefully help us with some of these uh, some of these uh, these challenges now something that is uh, a little bit more related to uh, account-based marketing is well one is we have multiple accounts each of them are somewhat unique but hopefully they're in some type of category that uh, we're targeting there's multiple industries right? like we have multiple we're typically not going all in on one strategy we account-based marketing is typically part of a well-balanced diet so to speak so and we have only one website right so we can't just make our website targeting one specific account right we've got to hedge our bets so to speak and let's face it, everybody on the phone here today or on the uh, uh, webinar today, uh, unlimited wants, <laughs> limited resources, we have to make choices, right? It's a case that it isn't uh, the case that we can do everything. We have to make choices, uh, and that's really what strategy is about. Um, another challenge that we face is uh, sometimes the journeys, even though people are doing a lot of task switching, is that the, the buying cycles uh, might be a little bit longer because uh, there is availability of information, right? I want to do a little bit of spend a little bit of time understanding uh, uh, what is the right purchase. Even when we ourselves, we, you know, when we're buying a phone or we're buying a uh, some type of a uh, consumable, we want to spend the least amount of money and get the maximum. So we'll spend time re researching it. Uh, now, with account-based marketing, if we think about it, if we're doing targeted uh, messaging to a specific set of companies, the challenge we're going to face is how do we maintain a consistent dialogue and congruency through multiple steps of a somewhat longer journey. Uh, so it's a case if they they get to the website or they get and consume a, 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 a message that you've sent them, and then they come back we don't want them to be thinking, you know, I'm dealing with a completely different company. Um, excuse me. And I think the biggest challenge we face in digital marketing is buyer online buyers trust nothing. You know, it's a case that uh, it's so easy. Like you see in the news, all types of things about fake news or uh, even uh, like I get emails from brands that I know and trust and I won't open them. Like we all get emails from PayPal that we'll never open because again, it's too easy to fake it. So as digital marketers, 
we face this challenge of really uh, building trust and maintaining trust with our, our perspective, our prospects. Uh, so really, the solution to these challenges is well-targeted messaging and personalized engagement. And really, I think that uh, this is a data problem more than it is a marketing problem, specifically when we're talking about uh, account-based account -based marketing. So uh, if I think about data, there's uh, data is extremely important in account-based marketing. And really, if we look at the types of data available to us as strategists and executioner, uh, as marketers rather, um, there's really, uh, I, I, I uh, categorize the data into three different categories. Speculative or re research-based data, behavioral data, and direct engagement data. So if we look at the research data, typically this is what I call metadata. It's descriptive data. It's data that is uh, static, uh, so to speak. It's like what companies the people work for. Uh, this person works for uh, Acme Inc. or May. Uh, it's a case that Acme Inc. is in this specific uh, industry. Uh, their revenue targets or revenue model or their high level public strategies, this type of stuff, I, I argue, is metadata. It's descriptive data of the accounts that we're trying to target. And we'll get this data either uh, from consultants or in-house uh, subject matter experts, or maybe we'll do a bit of web, uh, web investigation or look at the news or external research firms, uh, or even we'll pull in some data from, uh, uh, say, some of the public, uh, publicly, public enrichment APIs like data.com or Clearbit or any of these contact aggregators that are out there. There's lots of them. Uh, the next type of data is uh, behavioral data. And this behavioral data is when somebody, when the actual individuals are doing stuff, right? It's uh, where they're doing it, how they come to your website, uh, what, they, uh, what they do on the website, what they click on, how long they spend on specific pages. Maybe they're, they're, uh, they're phoning, they're chatting. Uh, maybe they bought something in the past. So this is really transactional data. And it's, uh, it's a case that uh, it's uh, very important data, but it is uh, definitely, uh, it is transactional in nature. Somebody does something, we are viewing that as trying to interpret behaviors based on this, this data. And finally, the, the, the best data of all is direct engagement data. This is where uh, people are uh, actually, uh, our, our staff are engaging directly with uh, the, the client organizations or your staff or salespeople or whatever. So sales calls, customer meetings, uh, Slack uh, channel support calls, email back and forth, uh, any of this stuff happens where the people are, the, 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 the data is uh, directly as part of a conversation uh, uh, with, with the individuals. So if we look at uh, the, the data with respect to our, our funnel and uh, our engagement, if we look at the account-based marketing funnel, at the very top, are our target accounts. So these are the target, the, the, these are the accounts that we're trying to uh, engage with. So we have this list of accounts that we want to do business with. Then we have down the funnel, our engaged prospects within these accounts. So these are the people that are engaging with our marketing activities. And then a little bit further down the funnel uh, is the people that we have sales opportunities actually identified and uh, they have the prospect has an opportunity, they have, they have a need, uh, they have budget, uh, they have timelines, et cetera, and the salespeople are engaged. And then finally, at the end of the story is after they purchased, um, we're really trying to build them as, as, uh, as uh, brand advocates and uh, increase the depth of a relationship with, with the account. So this is our funnel structure. Now, if we overlay the data, so it's a case that first we have our research uh, metadata. And this is really at the beginning, it's speculative. And it applies to the entire funnel. Right, it's uh, it's it's metadata. It's not changing rapidly. So let's face it, the data has a play throughout the entire journey with with uh, with the targeted accounts. 
And this data is quite often uh, inside your marketing automation platform or your CRM, spreadsheets, slide decks, reports from consultants, what have you. So there's a lot of this data captured in these different systems. Now, the next type of data is the behavioral data, and this can only start when the prospects are actually engaging with your marketing activities. So it's a case that uh, uh, there, it's behavioral, so there is some inference involved. So they are on this page for a long time, chances are they're interested in that topic, or they uh, came from this other site, or they engaged with this ad, So, but it is direct engagement. But there is, I would argue, some inference involved. And the systems that this data is in, marketing automation platforms, CRMs, Google Analytics, counting systems, wherever, any of these things that, uh, these are the systems that uh, we're typically using to, to drive demand. So it's a case that the, the data is housed in these systems. And it applies again from the point of engagement all the way on through to, uh, again, the account penetration uh, strategies of the, of the, of the journey. And finally, the direct in, uh, interaction data, and I think this is factual data because the reality is uh, prospects aren't, uh, are, are, we're having conversations, uh, there's nobody going to benefit by, uh, you know, uh, misleading or deception. Uh, it's a case that, uh, you know, people are asking questions on chat, they're ex asking questions on your support or your social media platforms or talking to sales. This is direct engagement data. And I think this is the the great the best data of all because again and everything above that uh, this 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 uh, uh, direct engagement data is somewhat speculative uh, uh, if you will and it's in the CRM phone software email software chat software social software and hopefully we have the ability to flow this data from the factual data upstream into the the uh, the behavioral data and speculative data so that we get good accurate representation of the accounts we're targeting so really and there's lots of studies about the data problem or the data advantage or the data opportunity and uh, I would say that uh, and this, there's a report here that talks about the the, the data challenges and uh, businesses uh, are agreeing that 84 percent of the data is absolutely essential to drive business and uh, the challenge is is that well there's a lot of different cloud software applications that is are capturing this data and if we think about the stack, you know, like uh, quite often we'll have social tools, email tools, web tools, survey tools, CRMs, all of this different date cloud-based applications. Now, all of the software is outstanding. You know, these, each of these uh, different tools does an outstanding job in its niche. Uh, but the challenge with a, uh, a very large stack of, of, uh, of specialty tools is that Let's face it, it becomes very difficult to maintain uh, data consistency and uh, congruency across the platforms uh, and really trying the, the prospect is what's missing in this picture. Little pieces of the, of the uh, prospect are spread out amongst all of the different software packages. And we get this sort of scenario where, you know, uh, if you can imagine a, a scenario where there's a, a, a room and there's uh, an elephant in the room and these three blind mice all touching different parts of the elephant. One will think, oh, we've got a snake in the room. Another one will think, no, 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 I don't, I'm just gonna climb up this tree. You know, they're touching the leg possibly. And uh, at the end of the day is that uh, there's no way to understand that there is actually an elephant in the room is the point. Is the point of the story. So from an account-based marketing uh, perspective, you really have two choices. Really simplify the stack or have a very good integration strategy to get the, 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 get the data flowing uh, so that we have one version of the truth across all of our software systems. So really, and why do we want this? Because I think that to accelerate conversion rates and drive uh, drive uh, uh, people through the buyer journey, we need to be using personalization. We need to personalize the engagement to the individual, right? We need to use this data to drive drive the conversation. So really, the benefits of personalization are clear. Definitely for us as market, uh, marketers, it's a case that reduces friction. It's, it allows us to communicate directly with the individuals and uh, supply specific content to help people make buying decisions. 
and with uh, from the buyer's perspective, it uh, reduces the friction. It's the case that they're they're not having to weed through all of the information you have. Really, they have challenges uh, themselves to come to a buying decision. So you're helping them along that that process. Now, from an account-based marketing perspective, if we're just doing, you know, uh, targeting five or six accounts, you know, we can do this manually, right? It's uh, a few prospects, a few people to reach. Okay, I only have 10 companies and three people in each company. It's not, it's not a big problem. But if we're wanting to really scale our businesses, the reality is, is we want to, instead of fishing, we want to fish with nets as opposed to hooks, right? Because we want to drive more business through our funnel. So really, uh, uh, manual personalization becomes extremely difficult, <laughs> if not impossible, to do, unless, of course, we're able to automate the process. So really, what we want to be doing is using uh, contextual content industry that we're experts at we're experts for you as a company hey, Sean, can you, i think we lost you for a second can you repeat that for just go back to uh maybe like two seconds ago for yeah thank you how's that okay um so great. yeah really the uh the story here is that um Really, personalization is easy. If we have one or two uh, clients, we can do it manually. But if we're trying to fish with nets as opposed to hooks, personalization manually becomes uh, difficult, if not impossible, unless, of course, we have some means for automation. Um, it's a case that uh, really, uh, the reason what we're, we really want to get to is uh, journey automation through the use of contextual content. So it's a case that we want to be telling a story with or building a relationship with an account where we're saying, we so we know the problem that not just your industry faces, but you as a company face. And we want to be able to uh, adapt our content such that as they move through the buying process, that the messaging is consistent and they're not, they don't fall off the track, so to speak. So really, we want them to be able to come back to the website, come back to our engagement, come back to our content and be left off exactly where they, they were the last time they came. So we're not jumping off the cliff and reintroducing ourselves to the account the next time they come in, uh, let's say, instead of from an email via, via SEO. Um, so really, where do we begin? And I think it's uh, we need to begin by working on the data and understanding the journey and uh, building our uh, our data plan and understanding that there is a progression from anonymous visitor through to where we are doing the direct engagement. And we need to understand what tools we're using, have a plan in place to capture the data and build our strategies, both for the anonymous visitors all the way through to where we are directly engaging with the prospects. So I'm gonna get, uh, switch it over just a bit here and I'm gonna talk about, I'm gonna go through an explicit example of how we've done some account-based marketing ourselves and some of the strategies that we've done to drive account-based marketing and uh, uh, and how we've uh, uh, been able to uh, positively impact our conversion rates, our, our uh, shorten our, our sales cycle times and and more importantly, help our clients make buying decisions. So really what our company is, I'll just talk about what software we're selling so that the strategies make sense when I walk through the, the story. So Active Demand is a full stack marketing platform. And the idea being is that it has all of the technology in a single stack uh, so that there is really one data model that is being impacted no matter what the marketing or sales strategy is. So it's a case we have social media dissemination tools, email marketing tools, landing pages, appointment scheduling systems, surveys, and one of the hottest leads, and, I, and I, I challenge everybody on the phone to disagree with this, is the hottest lead ever is when a prospect phones, right? So if somebody uh, like yourself, if you're phoning 
a vendor is typically for the for the first time. It's because you are interested in the products they uh, they sell. So if it's a case that we're not able to connect the call to the marketing uh, initiatives, uh, it's a case that there's a big gap in the marketing story. So active demand is a call tracking solution as well. And we also integrate with the social media platforms and the ad platforms, et cetera. But really the idea being is that with a full stack solution, there is one version of the truth, which is the, uh, of the prospect. So we're tracking the prospect from initial engagement all the way through to where they become brand advocates. And specifically how it relates to the account-based marketing story is uh, some of the things that we do that is unique to our platform is our, uh, our, our contextual content system and our ability to do behavioral segmentation. So, and I'll talk a little bit about this when I go through the example of how we are doing, um, uh, doing our own account-based marketing, a, a specific example. And of course, we, we have a, we're a full marketing automation platform with landing pages, website tracking, dashboards, and I think uh, the call piece that is uh, really powerful in this solution with our conversation or call forensics, we call it, where we can actually detect interests based on what somebody talks about uh, on the phone. So we're really good at uh, getting the direct engagement data as well as the behavioral data. Um, so. I'm going to go through and walk through an example of how uh, account how we will do account based marketing uh, uh, and look at one of our our segments as a, as as a as a vendor. So one of our segments, we have several several segments that buy our software. Uh, we have definitely a lot of software as a service companies that use our software. We have a lot of uh, uh, small businesses, medium-sized businesses, and very large businesses that have longer sales cycles, short sales cycles, et cetera. So we have a large, uh, if you think about the different buyer profiles that we have to address as a company, it's, it's diverse, right? And uh, it's a case that, uh, uh, you know, if we're thinking about account-based marketing, really just like you, we're gonna have to make a choice about, okay, which of the many segments are we going to target as, a, uh, as marketers? And which uh, accounts in that, strata, in that segment are of interest uh, in this specific initiative? So one of the uh, uh, segments that we do a lot with is marketing agencies. So marketing agencies use our software to drive demand for a, for a fleet of, 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 uh, of clients. So I'm going to show you how we are doing account-based marketing as one of our examples in that one segment and we do multiple segments just like you do. But one of the segments that I'm going to use in this example is how we're doing account-based marketing, specifically trying to target marketing agencies. So the first thing we're gonna do, of course, is our research-based data. So we're gonna find the domains of the agencies. Uh, there's lots of ways we can do it, just like you. We know which companies that are our agencies and we know what types of agencies they are. So what we'll do is we'll go find all of the domains of these companies that we wanna do business with. We'll upload the domains into our platform, and with our platform, we have the ability to do data enrichment. So we will go pull external public data from for all of these accounts that we're going to target for target. So, for example, you know this is an example of a, one of the uh, 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 an, an example agency that we potentially would be targeting in a company called Topdraw. So this company, we uploaded their domain, we did the data enrichment, we know that their employee range is 11 to 50 people, they're in about, um, I think it says they're 8 million or 80 million in revenue, we can see some of the technology that we've pulled off of uh, the external systems, uh, we've pulled some employees uh, of the account from our various sources, so the point is, is we've, and the logos, the logos are extremely important in our account-based marketing strategy. So now that we have, um, uh, and we've got contacts through uh, the contact aggregators and paid advertisements, et cetera. So now we have this, and Top Draw is one example, but there's a whole fleet of, of uh, organizations that are in this, this space. So now if we look at uh, really a, a very important part of our marketing strategy is our website. We're using WordPress, just like many of you people out there today. So with our website, 
site and integration with active demand we have the ability to do personalized dynamic contextual content uh, on the website so we have different types of content that we can dynamically adapt on the wordpress site we can do inline uh, dynamic content so we can not just personalize but we can change the content based on the uh, based on the uh, uh, the state of the buyer journey or the marketing segment we also have all of the overlays like uh, subscriber bars or push down bars or or tool tips we as well integrate with the ad platform so that we can dynamically adapt our ads based on the behaviors of the uh, of the uh, of the individuals. So if we're and as well pop-ups, which are something we do uh, contextually as well. So if we look at the example with you know account-based marketing for the agencies, let's say there's you know the CEO of uh, Top Draw, his name is Adriel. So we have a bunch of contacts in different agencies, and the the the, the experience here is looking at what Adriel's experience is. So if we send an email to Adriel, Adriel will click through, and the website will adapt to Adriel. Right, so it'll talk to him personally. Uh, we know that he doesn't have an agency portal. We'll automatically inject his logo onto the onto the website, and uh, the the subscriber bars are going to be personalized based on what stage of the buyer journey Adriel is in. And if he scrolls around our website, it's the case that uh, you know the reports on the website are going to inject his domain, inject his logos, inject his cityscape. So we're really going to be personalizing the engagement with Adriel and TopDraw. So Adriel will never be able to come back to our website without seeing a personalized experience based on not just what we do for agencies, but what we do explicitly for in this case top draw and, and the, if there's a thousand agencies the story is the same for all thousand agencies that we're targeting we have personalized adaptive content based on on the uh on the state of the buyer journey and the marketing segment so when they're engaging with us we can look at the pages they visit we look at um the uh how much time they spend on on the pages the chat topics what they talk about uh email engagement anything that their webinar questions any of these things that people are doing active demand is tracking as as far as data and we adapt our website, we adapt uh, our ads based on the state of the, the, buying, the buyer segment and the stage of the buyer journey. And also if they have explicit interests that they've talked about either by looking at specific pages on the website or talking to us on the phone, Active Demand is tracking the conversations, what they talk about in the chat. So for example, if they say, you know, I use pipe drive if they say that on the phone the ads they're going to see are going to start talking about how well we integrate with pipe drive and they'll start seeing tool tips and overlays on our website that talk about uh, pipe drive and if we look at the the, the website once they've uh, signed up for a trial now the website's going to adapt and start talking about hey you should book a meeting with us because that's the next stage in our buyer journey the uh, the overlays the tool tips the ads everything will change to bring the person to the next stage of our buyer journey which is book a meeting and the results in this and it's been absolutely outstanding and uh, i'm just using the example of the agencies and we do similar account-based marketing strategies for software as a service companies uh, specific industries etc and it's it's uh, without a doubt it's undeniable we've gotten very uh, ex exceptional lift in our conversion rates exceptional lift, lift in our page depth time on site session length uh, re-engagement and loyalty to the site is all increased because of this contextual content approach to account-based marketing that we're doing and it makes sense because if you think about it somebody comes let's let's imagine like the uh the old school approach is having a industries we serve link on the website and emailing a specific account to get to that part of the website the issue is if they come back through seo and they come to your main website there's nothing about healthcare that you told said that you do such a great job on 
But with our approach, the total engagement with the website and all the ads, the emails, everything that we're doing with this individual prospect is aligned to the problems that they are facing as companies, not just as members of a broad market segment. So it makes sense that you'd see this lift because and the data doesn't lie. It's the truth is that we absolutely have seen these uh, massive increases with this account-based marketing strategy. So I think best practices in all of this, regardless of what business you're in or what strat, what uh, what the uh, buyer profiles you're targeting, I think the uh, the top of it all is we got you got to get the data right, right? The data is available, uh, and if you're not using the data, it's the case that uh, you're you're at a significant disadvantage. Um, and I think that uh, you have to get a stack, uh, stack strategy in place. Uh, either you're going to use tools that integrate very tightly, or you're going to simplify the stack to just a couple of tools so that you can maintain data consistency across the different tools that you're using. And think about the behavioral aspect. Customize the journey, right? It's a case that uh, the, your prospects, just like our prospects, they have internal challenges. They, they have pressures. Help them with the buying decisions. And don't forget about the emotional engagement, right? It's uh, you want to be connecting. You got to get the robot out of the room, right? You have to uh, understand uh, your your prospects are people, and your marketing process has to engage the people emotionally. And don't forget, we've got to be delivering value, right? It's uh, it isn't. If we've got to uh, think about what's in it for me from the prospect's perspective, right? It's uh, what are the challenges that they face? How can we deliver value to people in that specific space? And with account-based marketing, we should have very good data to understand uh, where the people are and what are the challenges they they face as a company. So really, uh, summarize here, it's a case that uh, uh, we have to be uh, uh, building trust. I think trust is a significant factor in digital marketing. Um, we've got to be, we're facing customers with short attention spans, longer journeys. We have, as, as companies, we, we're, in, we're, we're faced with trade-offs, unlimited wants limited resources, we have to make choices. So really we've got to understand and have a uh, well thought out data strategy and a strategy in play to ensure that our data is flowing from uh, the, uh, the uh, direct engagement through to the behavioral data all the way to uh, structure our metadata and uh, allow us to keep our segmentation uh, up to date. And really, we've got to think about the personali personalization uh, with content uh, for higher engagement. So that's, that's uh, hopefully through this presentation, I've given you some good ideas on how to do um, journey automation, uh, what the benefits of uh, account-based marketing are, and, uh, and, uh, how, and some ideas on how to, uh, to drive this stuff. And don't forget, at the end of the presentation, there's a uh, we have a, a free offer. We have, if you go to our uh, uh, Facebook page, uh, there is a uh, free uh, social media account tool that allows you to schedule schedule social media posts, uh, uh, et cetera. Just go to our Facebook page, sign up. There's no cost. You can use the tool forever uh, just to do your social media post posting. So now I'm going to hand things back. We're going to uh, and answer any questions that you may have. All right, so we'll start taking questions if anyone wants to type them right into the Q&A box and then we can ask them to Sean and um, get some answers on anything that uh, maybe he wanted to delve a little deeper in or um, get some clarification on. So let's see, it looks like um, we had a question come in from Natalie. I know it's something about do clients object to tracking them, but Natalie, if you can hear us, I'm not sure what them refers to. So if you can provide some clarification on that, we'd be happy to yeah. answer that. Or do you know? And I, you I, I think I can uh, uh, answer that. And if there's, uh, I can talk to sure. uh, that question mm -hmm. is uh, uh, there's definitely, uh, and I think the question is, is uh, do people with the level of uh, personalization and tracking that we're doing, are the, do they, uh, get offended or uh, feel that uh, that uh, there some kind of level of uncomfort that that type of uh, information is being tracked on them. And uh, the reality is, 
not you you want like i said you want to get the robot out of the room right uh so one is the tracking is happening and everybody who engages on the web today if they believe that they're <laughs> they're anonymous and not being tracked it's a case that there's going to be um, uh, a little bit of a actual reality, perceived reality uh, uh, pain once they do realize that the truth is they're being tracked. So everybody is tracking. And the reality is, is the tracking that we're doing is on our website, right? Everybody has the website. It's like if somebody come into your house and they're walking around, you're free to track them. Um, and also, uh, in some countries, you have to display that you're you are tracking them with with the your, your, uh, European Union requires uh, a cookie banner saying that we are tracking them on the website. So back to the personalization, though, is it has to be uh, it isn't typically done as brashly as we do it. We're very brash in our personalization because we're selling a personalization platform. But you can do it in such a way that it is uh, it is um, uh, uh, subtle, right? Like, uh, you know, injecting their logo, talking explicitly about their industry, you know, things that we do for that industry uh, and, and the things that we're doing for them. That's, that's the reality. But uh, like myself, I use, uh, we all have cell phones. And let me tell you, I, I, uh, uh, when I first saw Google saying, hey, you've got a flight in two hours, you should uh, get on the road or you're going to miss it. That's, is that creepy? Yes. Is it valuable? Absolutely. So it, get back, it gets back to drive, uh, driving, uh, driving uh, a value in your marketing process. Hopefully that answered your question. Great. Thank you, Sean. Um, so we have another question coming in from Lori. She asked if you can do ABM without a marketing automation system. Ah, good question. Absolutely, right? It's a case that uh, account-based marketing is uh, is 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 a strategy that's uh, that's um, uh, that is tool agnostic, right? Back in the day when um, when we were when I used to work in industrial automation company and we didn't have marketing automation and digital marketing wasn't what it was today, our account-based marketing strategy was phoning. Right. Uh, it's like phoning, trying to find out who's who in the zoo and uh, and uh, uh, driving, trying to be involved and getting in the right places as our clients, etc. Um, the benefit, though, of using uh, technology like a marketing automation system is the scale at which you can do it and the data consistency. Right. So back in the day when we were doing account based marketing with calling, we were limited by the number of good account managers that we had and the accounts that they could handle in a day. Whereas with the technology, the scale factor is really is really driven. Hopefully that answers the question. Got it. Thank you. Um, so Nick wants to know, he said, uh, talking a lot about personalized messaging, which requires voluntary data given by the user. So where or how do you suggest getting that information? That's a, that's a good question. And with the account-based marketing approach, uh, the, the first phase is the research data, right, that's publicly available. So with regards to the, uh, uh, this stuff is publicly available. If I'm looking at, for example, I use the example of Top Draw, uh, it's a case that, you know, I can go to their website. Right, I can go look at the news. I can go look at their their uh, LinkedIn page. There's lots of data that's publicly available. Their logo is publicly available. Now, uh, with the personalization, I'm only going to be using their name once they give it to me. Right, so it's a case that, uh, uh, and typically I'm uh, I might get it from a business card or I might get it from their website. Right, At the end of the day is that I'm doing account based marketing. In the old days, I had to go find out who's who in the zoo manually by asking questions. You know, oh, who's in charge of that in this company? Same sort of idea. So there is a, a, a piece of it that uh, they do have to give up uh, manually, or you're going to get it through research based activities. Hopefully, that answered the question. Got it. Thanks, Sean. So kind of expanding on that, uh, Jeff's initial question, which I think you just kind of covered, was the best way to get as many details as possible from customers. And then to add on that, he said, and what are some of the best data points to use when segmenting your base? Yeah, it's a it's a good question, and it comes down to uh, when you're the, the 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 narrower the segment, the better the personalization, um, uh, the better you're helping. Like if you can help Bob Smith from Acme Inc. with his exact problems, let's face it, uh, you're going to make a sale. But of course, there's diminishing returns because you can't 
personalized to that level of Bob in shipping's uh, specific problems. So really, it's in its uh, its business specific, uh, specific. It's a case if you're thinking about the stages of your funnel, and if you're if you have a well-defined buyer journey. Uh, you just have to, uh, like for us, it's uh, it's uh, uh, we're we're looking at the the specific industries that we're targeting or interest. It's like we use interests a lot in our in our seg auto segmentation. Like for example, if I, I hinted at it, if somebody comes from Pipe Drive's website uh, where there's a link from our website uh, on there because we're in their marketplace, if they click the Pipe Drive link and come to our website, let me tell you, our website is completely changed. It's and everywhere they go, you see nothing but how well we work with Pipe Drive. Their logo is plastered all over our website. So it really it's uh, it's business specific, right? Is that uh, you have to you have to walk before you can run? Is I would look at the the high return, high payoff segments that are working well for you, and start the personalization uh, with that with that segment. And then once you, you're in the process, replicating it, uh, uh, if you think about uh, our like for example, I showed you our website. Uh, they hero banner, the difference between the hero banner for an agency that hasn't uh, signed up for a trial versus a software as a service company that hasn't signed up for a trial. The only thing that's different is one line of text. So we clone the two hero banners, change the one line of text, and then do the beh behavioral segmentation. Hopefully that answered the question. Great, thank you. So an another question coming in uh, from Clemens. He asked, how um, do you recommend that clients operationalize buyer intent data? Operationalized Byron. That's that's a lot, uh, that's a good question. Um, and it comes down to stepping back. Is um, uh, you have to, you know, regardless of the type of data that, that you're actually using, whether it's buyer intent data or it's uh, just base segment data, is you have to look at the tools you're communicating with the segment on. Right. So if it's if the tools that you're using is only paid ads, right? Then uh, then basically you're 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 going to uh, be limited to that one tool set for uh, using this 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 uh, this uh, this personal I should say this segmentation data. So it really comes down to the tool set you're using uh, before I could actually give you a sound strategy on that. Okay, thank you. Um, we have another question coming in from Jeff, who said, how effective is using targeted personalized images in emails and print? Uh, it's a great question. Um, it's a case that uh, definitely with emails, like I think email is the one tool that uh, I would say everybody's using. It's a fantastic uh, platform. Um, it's uh, uh, the one thing that I, I, I would say, uh, I think people expect the personalization in the in the uh, in the the email. So doing the uh, the name and the company uh, the company that type of stuff as merge fields are, are is typically low hanging fruit. But if you can do stuff like what we do, is we'll actually personalize the the images, the logos, uh, uh, this type of stuff, and we actually use the open condition to dynamically adapt the image. So if somebody is in, for example, London, uh, and they're uh, uh, in a specific place, night, day, we can use any of this type of stuff to adapt the image that is rendered in the email client before they open the email. And it's absolutely uh, fantastic. The risk that you face, though, is that um, uh, you know, people expect that they're going to do the personalization is going to happen in e emails. The real lift is when they get to the website. So with emails, people consume the they don't spend a lot of time reading essays and emails. Like I get so many emails a day. I will get my it'll something get my attention. The whole idea of emailing is not to educate. It's to get their attention and get them to the website so that we can actually see the education. Right. Educate them there. So really, if they've showed an interest by clicking the link and going to the website, then the website, if it's personalized directly to that individual, it's fantastic and the lift is great. Got it. Thank you. Um, so Ellen said uh, she wanted to know if you can share some examples of how you've tied in offline marketing activities besides phone to your ABM strategy and what are the best ways to track that? 
that's a great uh, good question great question as well and uh, so uh, we don't do a lot of uh, offline marketing strategies but definitely a lot of our agency clients do use offline marketing strategies combined with online marketing strategies and they uh, typically what we're doing and I'm seeing done is um, if we for example mail outs right a mail out personalizing a mail out uh, using pearls which active demand supports and taking them to a, uh, a either a vanity URL website that's uh, geared towards that specific mail out call tracking is a very good play for uh, for offline uh, marketing like for example on the print have a phone number if they phone that phone number you know that person uh, uh, is calling because they got that uh, that mail out or um, uh, billboards of course call tracking if the the call to action is typically phone now or something like that or go to a vanity URL that has a landing page the end of the day is that uh, it gets back to attribution right so whether you're doing offline or you're doing um, paid advertisements or partner web webinars like this you want to know what's working and what's not so you can sp better spend your limited hours so uh, really call tracking is a great play to uh, give you the give you the data as to whether or not the print is doing anything because it's costly uh, it's it's a case that uh, 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 the data you, it's it's hard to tell whether they open the letter or threw it in the garbage right so uh, at the end of the day it's a costly and uh, offline marketing is is uh, is typically not as good from a tracking perspective but doing things like vanity URLs pearls and tracks numbers on the offline uh, initiatives is fantastic thank you so we have a couple of um, questions coming in specific to active demand wanting to know if you offer white label options um, and affiliate marketing with your tools Excellent. Yeah, definitely Active Demand. One of our segments is a is marketing agencies. So our entire platform can be be white labeled. Our branding is nowhere to be seen anywhere on the platform. So it's we do have a solution that allows uh, uh, everything to do with our branding to be removed from from the platform. And with regards to affiliate marketing, we just created a uh, a new affiliate system uh, baked into the platform where. Uh, you can do affiliate campaigns, do affiliate tracking and conversions based on the affiliates where you give the, your, your affiliates a, uh, a portal page that they can go in and see the results and see how and give them assets to, uh, uh, to use to drive, drive demand for, uh, for the specific uh, initiative, et cetera. So the answer is yes, we, we just released a, a nice new affiliate system as part of our platform. Awesome. That sounds exciting. Um, we have a question coming in from Ashley. She wanted to know uh, your thoughts around personalization for an industry rather than per prospect. Um, yeah, and uh, it's a case, it's a good question. Uh, um, and it is a funnel, right? Because uh, uh, with account-based marketing, uh, one is the industry, the second is the company in that industry, and third uh, is the person inside the company inside the industry. So uh, definitely, if you can, if you're focusing on one industry as your strategy, then of course, unlimited wants, limited resources. You have to change your website to just focus on that industry. But if it's a case that you're serving multiple industries, but you want to have a special special message for each of the individual industries, then uh, using dynamic content, you don't have to put the person's name in there. There. Uh, like uh, I use the example of uh, agencies versus software as a service companies. So when people, if we know that there is a software as a service company that's come into our website, either by a reverse lookup of their domain or their IP address, or they came in from one of our ads and we know they're in that segment, you know, where it's the, the messaging is going to be, uh, our website is going to adapt. Like for example, software as a service companies, our messaging is going to be two things. It's going to be, you know, uh, reduced churn, increase uh, MRR and affiliate based marketing. Those are three messages, but we'll have to choose on one of them. Um, we don't know the specific, uh, um, uh, uh, you know, we won't, maybe we do know the specific uh, narrow industry that the software as a service company is in, but uh, uh, we will adapt at the, we, do have our strategies laid out so that it is generic where we don't know you next is the industry and then next is the account and then next is the person so there are strategies for each layer and 
really it's about driving the 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 uh, pro, uh, providing value back to the the example with uh, google telling me i'm going to miss my flight it's about driving value so it isn't just about yes we serve this industry it's hitting the emotional and pain points for that industry when they are consuming the content that makes sense thank you um so this is a follow-up question when we were talking about a few questions ago uh the emails this comes from natalie she wants to know um what type of content is most successful via email the infographics video text images um yeah and, and it's a good that. question and i think that uh the challenge that we face with with email is deliverability so if we're have you know, we, I've been in email marketing for many, many, many years. Uh, it's a case that originally, you know, it was new. You have all these great, rich uh, text emails with, uh, you know, nice graphics, et cetera. The, the issue is, so there's two issues. One is uh, um, uh, the uh, email clients, never mind the people reading the emails, the more, the richer the email, the more e uh, the more uh, uh, content you have in the email, the more images you have in the content, all of that stuff is going to impact your deliverability, right? Because it's a heavy email and the email clients will know that it is a marketing thing because typically a message from Fred to, to, to Mary isn't going to, like I don't go build a fancy HTML when I'm sending a, an email to my, to my wife, for example, it's a plain text email. So we've seen um, uh, result much better results with uh, very very slim thin plain text uh, emails uh, over the the heavy image image heavy HTML emails. And we we do our mar marketing initiatives, initiatives like for example when we're marketing webinars we'll actually do both. We'll start with a rich text email a rich email uh, sorry each. HTML email with personalized logos, personalized images. Images are fantastic. If they're going to open the email, images are great. Um, then we will follow it up with plain text personalized from an individual in our company. And we'll rotate back and forth because some people do uh, respond better. So I would say don't go all in on one of the strategies. But if, if you do go all in on one of the strategies, keep it simple is my, my, my recommendation and go with the plain text. That's great, thank you. Okay, a couple other uh, questions here. We have um, a question from Eden who said, is there a function to be able to see your uh, return on investment when applying a personalized ABM or in particular active demand? Yeah, absolutely. It's uh, and what what's required for the uh, the ROI is of course the sale, right? Is uh, definitely we understand the costs, um, but it's the sale piece. So active demand does support uh, the concept of a transactional purchase uh, and recording the transactional purchase. Uh, this is either automated uh, in one of the workflows or if you're using our Stripe integration for purchasing or if you're using CRMs, uh, like for example, uh, um, uh, uh, any of the CRMs that uh, so, uh, support uh, Zapier or Pi, Pi, PySync or our native integrations like uh, PipeDrive, Pipeline Deals, and Salesforce, we'll automatically detect a closed one and uh, see the uh, 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 be able to relate this back to the initiative. So yes. Great. So then I think our our final question here will come from Tom, um, and Tom wants to know in your opinion. Opinion is data enrichment and personalization really the future of marketing and advertising? Oh, absolutely. This is uh, we've been uh, 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 we used to be a marketing agency before we were a technology vendor. Inter interestingly enough, and very early we saw the um, uh, the concept of journey automation through the use of contextual content as a, as a strong play. And Google, like you see what Google's doing and. Uh, the amount of value they're delivering with with the data they're collecting if they're just collecting the data and doing nothing with it but doing you know being evil <laughs> they wouldn't get very far but the fact that they're delivering the value back and providing a personalized experience it's uh absolutely the way of the future like you look at uh st the the uh the static table-based uh websites uh, uh in in the 80s uh then it went to um um more responsive websites and uh, I think that uh, the future is really like we're doing is 
uh, fully dynamic websites that adapt to the individual based on their behaviors. That's great. Well, thank you so much, John, for all of this awesome information. Um, just a reminder, everybody, we will be sending out a replay video of this presentation along with a PDF of the slides within about uh, 24 hours of this ending. And make sure to take advantage of that special offer, the free social account on Active Demand's Facebook page. Um, and with that, we'll close this round of Master Your Marketing. And we hope you'll join us next month um, with more information to come about that. We'll have AdRoll, uh, one of our other partners in this series, presenting. Uh, and we'll look forward to hopefully being able to answer more questions and provide more valuable content. And thank you again, Sean. This was great. Okay. Thank you. Thank you all. Have a good day, everybody.